Hello my Soccer Universe to a slightly different video. Yes, I really wanted to do a review of what uh, is going on in the other continents and hence I kind of made a World cup -y background. But yeah, I didn't have the time and I'm not sure if I will find the time. So uh, something completely different, something a bit fun, something that I've been threatening to do for quite a while. Some subscribers of mine already know that I've been planning like this. And so... Uh, Let's do it. Things that I learned from watching or being with being a soccer fan overall, which is kind of a weird theme because, you know, uh, soccer is usually seen as this, um, you know, free time, uh, leisure activity that many watch and, you know, just are so addicted to. And uh, in many ways, I think many people think it's it's a, a waste of time, especially, um, you know, if you watch like me a lot or, you know, that someone's life can so much uh, be dominated by that game. However, there is a very positive side effect coming with it. And I just wrote down three things that came to mind. There are more. I mean, uh, if I go into jerseys, you know, you suddenly learn a little bit more about design, how the pieces of clothing are called, you know, uh, what is a raglan sleeve, what is a v-neck, uh, what is a grand, um, grandfather collar and all those kind, kind, kind of things. How sleeve cuffs you know names like that or uh, what was what, what, what the trim all those things i actually learned while reading and dealing with soccer jerseys so this is the kind of the first category and maybe that way it will fit in the playlist the jersey talk. <laughs> but i don't have a playlist for this video to be honest uh maybe yeah i have to make one in any case so uh that's one example but for me and there is a reason why I'm wearing Cameroon. Uh, the biggest thing that if you are a big soccer fan is very likely you have a bigger grasp of geography than the average person. And it's all down to you watch the World Cup, you see a country that you never heard of and you look it up on the map and you know where it is. Happened to me with Cameroon, 1990 World Cup, Panini sticker album, Cameroon, what's that? Egypt, I knew. Cameroon, no idea. Never heard it in my life before. Yes, I was young, but never heard of a Cameroon before. We looked it up. Ah, it's there on the map. It's kind of on the band of Africa. Interesting. It was a former German, German colony. Interesting. Now speaks French and English. Also interesting. They almost made it to the semi-final. Well, that put Cameron squarely on the map. And you know, it works to, uh, both ways. I think that many famous uh, soccer teams not only teach others about the location where they are, but also put the, the city on the map. So, I mean, Cameron is now known all over the world thanks to their showing at the 1990 World Cup, the latest. Just a pure fact. Uh, I think that many industrial cities, mainly industrial cities, would not be well known in, in the world. I'm looking at you, Manchester, Dortmund, uh, come immediately to my laws in France, for instance. Uh, all cities that I would say are not necessarily on a touristy path. Uh, it's a weird thing that, yeah, Sassuolo in Italy, but it's not an industrial town uh, per se. Well, I always find, find, find weird, especially in Italy, but it, uh, that's how Italy is a country. It's almost any town that you um, go, go to has something scenic. Uh, Turin is probably the one, and even that one. I mean, I have never been in Turin, but about what I saw, there's actually quite some stuff to see there as well. But, you know, giving you a few. Uh, Cluj. Exactly, that's the town in Romania. Lovec, yes, that was a town in Bulgaria. Most people would not know these places unless they have intimate no, uh, knowledge. And did you know that Brest exists in France and in Belarus? Soccer teaches you all that. And a little bit Maradona there too. So yeah, uh, all these things you learn from soccer. I, told, I, 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 I totally think that most countries and uh, i think especially knowledge about africa also asia but especially africa 
grow, grew exponent, is exponentially better uh, within with the soccer fan community than for the uh, general public outside of it. So uh, that's one one big. If you get really into it, you know a whole lot more. And then not to forget about the host countries uh, for the big tour to to, to tournaments. Um, and it, and it's, it's not only that the geography. You also learn about uh, the politics in this. I mean, before the 2002 World Cup, I never knew that Japan and South Korea uh, don't really like each other and that they have kind of the, a really, really tough history with each other. And before the World Cup, there were hardly any uh, flights between those two countries. Who knew? Who knew? Thanks to soccer. I know. Uh, and you can go this all with rivalries and so on and so forth. Which leads, us, which leads me also to the second part. Um, when I was in school, I hated psychology, mainly down to really, really bad teachers. However, watching soccer, you learn a whole lot about psychology and uh, or human behavior in general. And I'm saying on and off the pitch. I mean, during the game, the way momentum shifts and how uh, people act in stress situations, how they deal with um, bad losses. Uh, I, I, I think there was this great, uh, in This Is Football on Amazon Prime, there was this great documentary, um, This Is Football, I think it was third episode on Chance, how Bayern Munich had two debilitating Champions League final losses and both times they used this uh, to come back and it, they, they spin it even further. I mean, this is an episode that I think is a must watch in many, many ways. Uh, but it's also, you know, uh, if you're in a charged environment, how quickly uh, tempers can flare up or how you can see um, general attitudes. I mean, most professional soccer players are alpha males uh, because otherwise you don't make, make, make it in sport. But uh, even on a turn around, you also learn about behavior off the pitch. Looking at the fans, uh, if you uh, look a little bit into ultra culture, which is this, uh, at first, yeah, this uh, absolute no-go zone. But if you look a little bit, it's very interesting how, especially coming from Italy, this will kind of, this came out of the history of the fragmented history of Italy itself. That all those cities actually were their own states and really were at war with each other, and this kind of is propagated in that culture. So I find this uh, very interesting. You also see very quickly with fans. Uh, it's one of those last tribal uh, things that, um, you know, it seems so weird, this us versus them and that we have wars, but then you are the soccer team and suddenly you're cheering for your team against those guys. I personally, if it wasn't for soccer, uh, <laughs> it tells you also about my psychology, I always thought, I mean, I never, I always thought that Vienna is, for instance, a very beautiful city and I still do. However, some of the people there, especially the Rapid and us, us, us events, are a disgusting bunch of people. At least when they treat how they treat other fans, and this is not. Uh, this is now. Uh, I made it on purpose. A uh, really, really tough statement. This is, of course, not true. I know Rapid fans uh, that I can have a very good conversation with. Yes, we disagree on each other. However, once you end, you go to the stadium. Uh, there, it is. Yeah. You're the bad guys, we're the good guys, and it is not going only a little bit uh, friendly banter. No, this can get very ugly very quickly as well, because it's this tribalism. That's something you have to understand. Soccer can teach you about that. So uh, I found this very, very, very interesting. Uh, what does, yeah, also the leadership skills. I mean, if you watch coaches, what it takes them, how a good coach uh, can actually lead a team and make the a team better. And on the flip side, if a coach is completely inept, how a team is falling apart. Really interesting stuff. Speaking of coach, a coach also uh, goes into strategy and tactics, which is actually the third thing that you can learn uh, uh, with not only strategy and tactics, I actually want to go a little bit then more in the mathematical side of things. Now, um, to be absolutely clear, I did not learn mathematics through soccer. However, the fact that you can see many mathematical phenomena within soccer makes it even more interesting. And I have a great book that actually really, really taught, taught me that. I mean, I have studied statistics, I have various academic degrees in it. Uh, I have a lo I always had a love uh, for mathematics, but the book that put it together for me, 
is this one, Soconomics. To me, best book ever written. It is not high level math, it is not it, but it will make you see the game in a whole other level. Now, when I say mathematics, I mean, uh, and this is, uh, can be many ways. The most imminent is game theory. Watch a penalty shootout, watch the interaction. And meanwhile, I don't watch penalty shootouts uh, like uh, sh uh, sh shivering and, and, and more. And please, please, please make it, make it, make it. There's a little, little bit there, but what I really watch is how goalkeepers and uh, shooters interact with each other, how they kind of try to get in each other's uh, head. And this, I know that you know that I know where I'm gonna shoot it. And that's why I'm shooting it somewhere else. All this is game theory in its purest form. You see how it's not only psychology, it is also a whole lot of math because it's a clear, uh, clear, uh, clear uh, zero sum sum game. There's a winner and there is a loser. And then the whole strategy, and you can show mathematically how what is the best way to uh, choose your shooters. And all, the, all those kind of things is really, really, really interesting. Just as a heads up, it has to, can be mathematically shown it's best to have your best shooters go first and then uh, go down the list. And what um, Southgate did in the Euro final was not that wrong by choosing his shooters. Maybe what's wrong was that he, they didn't get a little bit of a kick before that. But uh, no name players have much less to lose and are much more reliable in pressure situations. Another thing, it has been shown by math. Um, there's also, I, you know, the whole um, money ball approach to building a team, all uh, right there. Uh, geometry, oh yes, geometry. Look at free kicks, or oh, I mean, there is this great video about Messi scoring, uh, it was by ESPN uh, scoring uh, in the, I think was it 2011 Spanish Cup final against Bilbao. All the mathematical cal cal calculations and, uh, how, and, with, and, and with the angles, great thing. Then a uh, field of vision, how a goalkeeper has to position their wall, that's all geometry. And you do it automatically. So uh, that's something. And uh, the last thing that I have, uh, yeah, of course statistics, but you know, I don't want to now brag too much about it, but with statistics and chances, you will, especially, um, I can teach my students. I know expected goals, there are many articles out there, expected goals is a very weird statistic overall, because there is no unified way in computing it. However, I can teach the uh, concept of mathematical expectation very well with expected goals, although expected goals don't make sense. I mean, if someone has expected goals 0.3 and they score two goals, yep, they were really, really, really good. They scored two very unlikely goals. That's what it can tell you. But all this, a uh, little bit more, I don't want to say advanced, but you know, uh, not uh, imminent statistical concepts of uh, pro probabilistic concepts, you can make very well known with soccer as well and that's a pretty nice thing so here are a few things how you can totally profit from soccer and uh, i would say uh especially the first two geography and psychology are two big 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 ones in there so yeah let me know what you learned by watching soccer i surely have not covered every, everything i really would like to hear uh from you on the topic as well uh give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon with something completely different. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.